We're inbound to Tillamook, Oregon, about 30 miles east of the initial approach fix for its only instrument approach, the RNAV GPS Runway 13. Weather is 700 overcast with 4 miles visibility and 17 knot winds from the south. Well, we've got the weather at Tillamook and it's 4 miles visibility but it's only 700 overcast which is a little bit below the minimums on the plate. We're still going to try this approach but there's a good chance that we won't be able to get in. Winds are pretty strong out of the south, 17 knots out of the south. Our instruments are set, altimeter set, heading indicator set to match the compass. Now let's set up the radios for the approach. We're direct to JECWEF right now. We don't have an approach clearance, but let's load the procedure. So procedure, select approach. And the only approach here is the RNAV runway 13, so it brings us right to the transition step. And we're going to choose JECWEF. We're direct to JECWEF right now. We're, we don't have an approach clearance, but that's the fix that I filed in the route. So if I can activate it, and it's not going to change anything. We'll continue to just be direct JECWEF. Now after that, it'll transition us onto the approach, which we're not cleared for yet, but I anticipate that we will be by then. So let's verify that the waypoints are correct. We've got JECWEF, then FEDUJ, then INSAGE, then KUKYO, the missed approach point, then ELKA, and a hold. On the comm radios, I've got Portland Approach, who we're talking to currently on the comm 1. I have Seattle Center, the frequency on the plate, in the standby. I have uh, the CTAF. Whiskey, contact Seattle Center, 121.4. 121.4, Scott. 236, Papa Whiskey. Seattle Center, Scott. 236, Papa Whiskey, level 6000. Request the GPS runway 13 from Jekwef. Scott, 236, Papa Whiskey, Seattle Center. You can expect that. Okay, so then for the actual approach briefing, we have the RNAV runway 13 approach at Tillamook. Expiration is January 31st, 2019. Final approach course 136. Runway is 5,000 feet long and the touchdown elevation is 31 feet. After JECWEF, it'll be 4,500 to FEDUJ. Then a 136 course and down to 2,800 to INSAGE, the final approach waypoint. After that, to our LNAV. Scott 6 Papa Whiskey Cross, JetQuef at or above 5,400 at JetQuef, clears the RNAV runway 13 approach. Report established on the final approach course. JetQuef at or above 5,400 at JetQuef, cleared RNAV 13 approach. And report established on the final approach course, Sky 6 Papa Whiskey. Okay, so we can go down to 5,400 if we want. Let's finish the approach briefing first, though. So our LNAV MDA is 760 for a straight and landing on runway 13. No approach light system and our missed approach will be a climbing right turn to 5,000 direct Ulka and hold and we continue climbing to 5,000 with a direct entry there. The course reversal doesn't apply to us here because we have an OPT on the segment from JECWEF. The only time the, the procedure turn the course reversal would apply to us here would be if we were coming in the TAA to the northeast of Fedaj, where there's not an OPT. And the reason probably for that is it's at 5,500, and so you've got quite a bit of altitude to lose to get to 2,800 in 5.8 miles. So a lap around the hold is, is probably necessary there. You could request a straight in if you wanted it, but you'd want to be careful that you give yourself time to descend. This is an LNAV-only approach. There's no vertical guidance as part of the procedure, but on a lot of these procedures, the GPS will give you plus V advisory vertical guidance, and that would show up as LNAV plus V in the enunciation. And that's strictly advisory guidance. It doesn't account for obstacle clearance. If there's any step downs, it doesn't account for those. It's just to help you make a stabilized approach to a landing. In general, you'll get that guidance, but there's unfortunately no way to know for sure on the 430 at least until the final approach waypoint becomes the active waypoint. So it's important to verify that you're getting the minimums authorized by the GPS that you expect or to adjust the plan accordingly. We also have a note for visual segment obstacles, which means that we'll have to visually see and avoid any obstacles once we're below MDA on our descent to the runway. Our makeshift visual descent point here is going to be at two miles from the runway. That's the point where ideally we would start our descent. And our effective missed approach point will be at 1.5. If we pass 1.5 miles from the runway, I'm going to commit to doing a missed approach rather than trying to make a steep descent. So our actual misapproach waypoint is 0.5 from the runway, so that puts our VDP 1.5 miles from that, and our practical misapproach point at 1 mile from that. 
With a strong wind on this approach, the track desired track combo is going to be especially useful. You can see my heading here is pretty far left of the heading bug, but my track and desired track are matched up. Leaving the heading bug on the desired track makes it obvious at a glance the heading indicator that we've got wind out of the left. That's pretty strong. Descent planning can be pretty important on these approaches. We're going to be at 4,500 at Fetage. And after that, we'll have to go to 2,800, and we'll have 5.8 miles to do it. So that's almost 2,000 feet to lose, which at 500 feet per minute would take us four minutes. And 120 knots, two miles per minute, we'd cover eight miles in that time, which is greater than the 5.8 for that next segment. And I'd like to be at 2,800 by the time I reach the final approach waypoint. We do have a pretty strong wind out of the south, though, so we're not going to be covering quite two miles per minute over the ground. And I'm just going to descend a little bit faster than 500 feet per minute, maybe seven or 800 feet per minute, just to make sure I get down there. Then on the final segment, we've got another 2,000 feet to lose, but we've got six and a half miles to do it in. So that would seem to be a more comfortable gradient, but practically speaking, we want to get down to altitude at least two miles or so before we reach our missed approach waypoint, or before we reach the runway, which is actually uh, half a mile after our missed approach waypoint. All right, 2.30 is the next desired track. Spin the bug over to there. Spin the CDI, spin the OVS over there as well. And here comes the turn. And this will be a descent to 4,500 also. Heading a 140 coming in six seconds now. Goes the heading bug. Set the OBS and start the turn. Setting the course is less important here because it doesn't actually do anything, but it is a good reference to be able to look at. So once we're established here, we're going to start a descent down to 2800 and make a radio call that we're established on the final approach course. And as the final approach waypoint becomes our active waypoint here, we can see that the enunciation is for LNAV only, so we're not going to be getting any plus V advisory vertical guidance on this approach. We'll be on our own for our, for our descent. Center Sky 6, Papa Whiskey, established on the final approach course. Sky 6, Papa Whiskey, Roger, there's no traffic reserved, but you need the Tillamook Airport, radio services are terminated. Report cancellation of IFR, or missed approach on the frequency, frequency change is approved. Frequency change approved, Sky 6, Papa Whiskey. Tillamook traffic, Sky 236, Papa Whiskey, about an 8 mile final runway 13, Tillamook. And we can use this intermediate segment as a trigger for a before landing checklist also. So our flow pattern is just fuel on both. Mixture can go rich now. Lights and switches as desired landing light can come on. And then to the push to talk switch to key up the lights with seven clicks. Here comes 2800. So I'm gonna set the power for my approach level. Configuration, just 2100. I'll overestimate it just a little bit because we have some time to slow down here and the RPM will creep back as we do. Here comes the final approach fix. Before landing checklist is complete, we're going down to 760 and we just keyed up the airport lights. 1000 for 760. I'm going to level Three off at 1800 and then ease one, down. Three. Still nothing out the window. And I'm going to lead the level off by about 80 feet. So throttle's coming back in pitch coming up to the horizon. Still nothing out the window, so I'm going to ease it down by another 40 feet. Try and put it right at 17 or 760. Got a little bit of time yet. Got here plenty early, so we have time to make our way down there and hopefully see the runway within the next mile or so. Here's a mile and a half. This is where our effective visual descent point would be. And then at one mile is where we decided it's going to be too late. And we're going to go missed. Still nothing out the window. And this, this needle reflection here only corresponds to 0 0.01 miles off course. So that's how sensitive things do get when you get close. And we're going to start a missed approach now power comes in, we pitch for the climb.
first step in every mist approach is always climb. So if you don't know what the mist approach is, start a climb. In this case, it's a climbing right turn direct to our mist approach holding waypoint to 6,000, or to 5,000 rather. But it doesn't start until we actually cross our mist approach waypoints. So we have to climb straight ahead for now. Now it's switched to our mist approach holding waypoint. With the suspend enunciation, we can press OBS to unsuspend, and it gives us a desired track of 188. I'll put the heading bug there. Seattle Center Scott 236 Papa Whiskey, missed approach, climbing through 2300. Scott 236 Papa Whiskey, I didn't. I didn't, Scott 6 Papa Whiskey. Scott 236 Papa Whiskey, ready to contact 38 miles west of the Newport, picture of the Newburgh Rio Altitude in the case passing 2600. Execute the missed approach procedure as published. Expect for the clearance 1840 Zulu. Mist has published for the clearance 1840 Skag 236 Papowski. On a GPS missed approach, it's a really common error to either forget to unsuspend the GPS or to unsuspend the GPS too early. It's also a common error to forget to switch to GPS from VLOC mode on something like an ILS approach when you want to use GPS for the missed approach. And so while GPS approaches on the surface would seem to be simpler, there are some traps that'll get you if you don't practice these missed approaches regularly.